Welcome to part two of the series on business process automation. This time we talk about basic definitions. A business process is essentially a series of steps that an organization undertakes to produce a certain result. Very often we also talk about inputs to a business process and output that the business process produces. When we have a description or a model of a business process, we then can produce instances or cases of this business process. And usually there are certain triggers that start an instance or a case of a business process. And when we do modeling, this is something important we have to consider. Now, a workflow is a part of a business process that can be automated or that is automated and that is mainly concerned with information processing. An example is the business process of getting passengers on a plane. The process begins with the passenger booking a ticket. Then the passenger arrives at the airport, gets his baggage and goes to the check-in counter. And at the check-in counter there is the baggage drop-off and then there is the passport, everything is controlled and then the passenger proceeds to the security check and finally goes to the gate where boarding takes place and then the passenger sits on the plane. So that's the business process. The workflow might be as follows. The workflow is the information processing part of the business process and only covers certain aspects of the business process. So in our example, it, the workflow starts with booking the ticket, entering all the necessary data, and then the next step in the workflow is the check-in, where you go to the check-in counter. Arriving at the airport and everything with suitcases or parking doesn't interest us here and is not part of our workflow. The workflow only transports the relevant data from the booking task to the check-in task. And the workflow will also change the status of the passenger. So the passenger from being, let's say, new is then booked and then checked in after check-in. And then also going through the security is not something that is interesting for us in this workflow. And the next step is boarding. So during boarding it is checked that the passenger is effectively checked in, that the data are correct, and then the seat is booked on the plane. And as you can imagine, aligning this workflow with the business process 100% prevents chaos at the airport. Granularity is always an issue for business process modeling. In our example, the business process had five steps. From a higher perspective, this could only be one step in a bigger process of transporting a passenger from A to B, for example. And on the lower level, there could be 30, 40 or 50 steps, depending on what level of detail we choose. Our workflow had three steps and while it is more difficult to model workflows because you need more information than for modeling business processes, it is somehow easier because you can imagine that you have concrete forms to fill at the different steps and the level of granularity is easier to find. Business processes may have many or few perspectives. We can decide to model just the control flow in our example. So we will only model which task comes after which task. For process automation, we need a minimum of three perspectives. So workflows have the following three perspectives. Control flow, that is which task comes after which task. The data, what kind of data we are dealing with in each of the tasks. And finally, the resources. Who is executing a certain task? And here on the slide behind me, you can see the control flow as a series of tasks. 
depicted in some kind of graphical notation. This is typical for workflow management systems. Then you have the data specification in textual format here and the resources. And the workflow management system here happens to be YAL, yet another workflow system, a system that I like personally, but it could be any other workflow management system. And then on the right hand side, you can see the web application that results from the whole specification. So where are business processes and workflows in the bigger picture? For example, in the picture of an enterprise architecture. At a very high level in an organization, we have products or services or capability, whatever they are called here. And this high level is supported by the business processes that enable the organization to produce these services and products. The business processes in turn may be supported by IT services. And the IT services are made up of applications. And in the case of process-aware information systems, we often have business process management systems or workflow management systems. So these workflow management systems are below the IT service level. And then again below these applications and workflow management systems, we have the IT infrastructure consisting of hardware, networks, etc. And that's all for now. So next we'll talk about when to use business process management systems. Stay tuned.